it's just so beautiful to see that you know how how settled you feel in life today uh, the and it's almost so inspiring um you know i let me know since you mentioned all this you know that this entire commodification of the industry and you know just talking all about the box office success and the number and the business you know i also want to know from you um do you then also believe in commodification of women by the industry because say today if we talk about all these box office successes we have you know the the movies you know pan india movies doing great business but then you also see a lot of dance numbers in it and you know you also see that a lot of uh, these numbers are just put to you know just create eyeballs uh, so you know i want to know from you that uh, is it the time to do away with that you know from your own experience well it's a business at the end of the day and i guess the producers are always hoping that audiences will come into theaters to watch film and unfortunately there is a certain you know trend that we followed and it has um translated into football um you know whether it is the way we um and it's happening now with both men and women so let's not only focus on the fact that women are expected to wear a certain kind of clothes or have a certain level of fitness to be able to you know whether it is uh, showcasing uh, just how fabulous they look yeah, right. uh, all of the same is ascribed to men as well right so uh, it's 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 equally a uh, shared responsibility by men and women yeah. um yeah. it's a what do i say it's just <laughs> you know is it hard. a time to do away with it you know like do you feel that we we can, like we can have the equal amount of box office success without having those how, how, how will we do away with it until there are takers for it yeah it's hard Mm-hmm. but the good thing is the healthy thing is that more and more actors now are talking about what a huge pressure it is and how what it does to their mental health and how you know we need to stop um ascribing so much importance to the physicality of people and focus so much on the way a person is looking and yeah. that there is a, a a lot of discipline a lot of work and a lot of pressure that comes with looking a certain way to be on screen so yeah. and then of course there are aberrations right there are so many art- artists out there who are doing extremely well without having to fit into a certain mold i think yes. vidya really that yes. mold and has said hey you know what yeah. <laughs> i'll do it my way uh, <laughs> i will be i will be the body type my body allows me to be i will choose my idea yeah of what works for me and i will fly with it and flourish in it and and she's she's proven it time and time again and i i'm good off to her for doing that yeah. and i think we, but we need more and more people to homa forishi again another example of an artist who just refuses to conform is doing exceedingly well mm-hmm. uh, is is not allowing swara baskar i can give name many many actors who are really using their minds uh, their intelligence to do what they truly believe in and i celebrate them each of them for it yeah yeah uh there you know um, you're a mom now first congratulations on that you know um now you tell me this does uh, being a mother add to your strength as a woman today for me yes it does um because uh, i've always been maternal I've always wanted to be a mother. Mm-hmm. I have like this beautiful bit of natural light on my face. I hope it's not disturbed. <laughs> no, I think it's it's good. I think it's just like <laughs> God's way of <laughs> divine intervention. Uh, you know, intervention in our interview. <laughs> There's like this glow coming from my heart. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, I've always wanted to be a parent. I've uh and I absolutely love children and just my my kids are my world and it's just given me so much joy and and such a such a deepening of purpose. I feel like everything that I do now in a way is uh going to be for my children. So 
uh, I do everything now with so much more respect and love and regard. I always did it with love and regard, but there's just yeah, it's a lot more intense than perhaps ever before. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, they are. Um, when you and Webber got married, you had like this female priest uh, doing the rituals, you know, which was I think the the most like the freshest sight I had seen in you know the longest time online, you know. Um, so did you expect it would come out as this big statement, you know, from your side that you're breaking these gender roles? Um, I, I don't think our intention was to make a statement. It was something that we cared about. We felt yes. really strongly about, and felt it was most so natural and wonderful to do. Uh, and of course, we had access to this incredible lady who happens to be the aunt of one of my best yeah. friends, my childhood yeah. friends. And she was generous enough to agree to, you know, uh, solemnize our our uh, wedding. Yeah. And I was very happy to see how many people responded so generously to it and and recognize the importance of um, really asking ourselves why is it that there are so many jobs in this world that we only perceive men to do. Yeah. Women can do the jobs just as well. Um, mm. Of course, culturally, we've women haven't played these parts. You know, they've just yeah. not done these things before. Yeah. Um, so that's a huge shift. And I think what happens is, like for example, Vinita, in my case. I'm an SDGs advocate, right? If I am advocating for the sustainable development goals, and amongst those goals, gender equality is a very prominent goal, one that I truly and personally care about, then I am going to question our choices yeah. in everyday life and ask of myself and ask of ourselves, what are the choices that we can make to bring gender balance to yeah. bring gender justice before yes. how can we and the only way we can do that is by personal choice of course educating girls can make a big difference but how do we raise our girls how do we raise our boys what are the examples you're setting for them at home are we sharing responsibilities are we showing our children that this is a job a man can do just as well as a woman can do you yeah. know or a woman can do just as well as a man can do so I feel like all of this makes a big difference and as people who are in the public gaze, if sometimes some of our choices can percolate into consciousness and help civil society really address certain things that we've perhaps ignored up until now or not given enough focus or emphasis to, it's a great opportunity to do that. But honestly, Vinita, we didn't think of it as a public statement. We thought of it as something that we earnestly wanted to make possible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for us, um, you know, they are, you just mentioned, you know, all the fabulous work that you've been doing. Um, you know, the, the just global ambassador for environmental issues. You know, you're just speaking for wildlife cons conservation and there's peace and you know, there's so many wonderful things that you are associated with. Um, do you think that you know, uh, generally, more uh, say women leaders, speakers, and say more more uh, female office holders would like collectively make this world a better place for all of us. Oh yes, Lata, <laughs> I feel you yeah. know women can save the human species from extinction. <laughs> uh, we really can. I think we can make the world a kinder place, a more just place, a more empathetic place, and. Um, you know, the, the sad reality of climate change is that it impacts women the most and it's driving social inequalities, right? Mm -hmm. And to be able to rise above it and to actually make the change to, to reverse uh, the, the problem and to ensure that, you know, global temperatures don't go beyond 1.5 degrees rise uh, within this decade. There's a lot of work that women can do in collaboration with each other, in partnerships with each other, because we just are a force to reckon with. You know, we have a chromosome in our body that helps us respond to life in a particular way. Yeah. It's science, it's biology, it's also proven by women in the workplace, proven by women in policy, proven by women in government, proven by women in the healthcare systems, proven by women as CEOs. So it's across the board. I'm not saying that all women are empathetic. I think most women can be. And therefore, we can help make 
just transitions and make the difference that we we need to see in the world yeah yeah thank you dia for that and before i wrap up you know uh, let me just ask you this uh, i'm sorry uh, yeah you could yeah that's thank it thank you nita yeah we really need to wrap up we'll say when we get to another meeting no problem no problem that's thank you thank you yeah yeah yep yeah so uh, there you know before i wrap this up i need to ask you this um as a woman um just like a quick uh, one any incident that that you know that you faced in your life in the industry or otherwise where you just like you know decided to stand your ground that you know you decided to not budge as a woman you know something that just you look back and you realize you you just feel proud as a woman as the strength Uh, that you derived from that uh, uh, incident you know in life you know uh, i can't speak of one incident but i think it's a series of um, situations that um, i refused to allow myself to get into um it's a it's a lot of choices that i've made it's all the no's that i've been able to say that i feel very proud about Mm-hmm. um and and those knows come at a cost uh but i'm glad that i could say no when i needed to uh i think a lot of women are afraid of saying no uh because they fear loss of opportunity i've survived this industry and the workplace for 23 years and i think i've only been able to do that uh because i've been able to stay true to who i am and what my core values are and what it is that i truly believe in representing yeah yeah uh, so thank you so very much dia i think that was really a heartfelt conversation and um cheers to the women who you are and cheers to the women that we have all uh, you know become come out to be thank you absolutely and it's our sisterhood that will really help the world emerge from all the problems that we find ourselves in i hope we can continue to empower each other celebrate each other love each other and uh, yeah be there for one another yeah thank you so very much dia cheers to you thank, thank you, you.